Hello, this is T-Rex bringing you back for some more Resident Evil 2. In the last episode, we managed to defeat G-Stage 2 down here in the underground facility below the police station, I guess. And so, with that being taken care of, we're getting ready to find a way out, is what the main quest objective would indicate. And so... Uh, there is an item box here that I don't intend to use just yet. I think my current loadout will be fine for the upcoming tasks. There's really no reason for me to change it right now. So with that being said, I'm just going to go ahead and head on over to the ladder here and move the story forward. And so we're back in the parking garage basement, much like with Claire. And there's three doors here, none of which I can access right now again. And so really, as with Claire, when I was going through the first run, the thing that I want to do is go ahead and head on over here to the card reader. And I want to inspect the card reader, and by doing that, I get a cutscene. Damn. Need a key card. You gotta be kidding me. Lower it. FBI. Sorry. Thank you. For your help. Surprised you made it this far. FBI, huh? What's going on here? Sorry, that information's classified. Where are you going? Do yourself a favor. Stop asking questions and get the hell out of here. Hey! I'm not done talking to you! And so in the cutscene there, I guess we meet a mysterious woman who indicates that she's from the FBI. So, here things are a little bit different than what we ran into with Claire. So, we do actually want to go ahead and follow the woman through the door that's now open over here. And we get some difference here as well with playing as Leon. Well, it's not immediately apparent yet. So we'll go ahead and pick up the map here first. And then maybe it will be. <laughs> Guess not. So go ahead and head on through this door though. And now we're in a new area, and it's called the jail. And so we didn't have access to the jail in Claire's walkthrough. But by comparison to that, we don't have access to the route that would have taken us to the private elevator that would have led us up to the chief's office as Leon or in the second run here. So there's a locked door here that we can't get through. 
And I guess we'll go ahead and head on into the holding cell area. And there's a variety of zombies here, or a few. And I don't know if taking them down will serve any benefit later on, but I'm going to do it anyways. And you can't get into any of the cells either. They're locked. So. And there is a switch here that we can pull down, but it doesn't seem to do any good. Nor does it get marked on the map, I guess, either. So, so yeah. Can't do anything with that for the time being. And there is one more zombie over here, then, that I want to take out. Really, the ammo expenditure is minimal. It, they take a single bullet to take down. So, it could be worth taking them out right now in an attempt to save some turmoil later on, I guess, for lack of a better term. Hello? Hey. I don't believe it. A real human. <laughs> Hello, human. You've been here long? Long enough. Are we the last ones alive? No. No, there's a few of us. Huh. That's good news, I guess. Yeah. That's, of course, Irons sent you. Irons? You mean Chief Irons? Is he still around? Who cares? Hopefully he's somebody's dinner by now. What do you mean by that? He's the bastard that locked me in here. I'm sure he had a good reason. He did. I was about to blow the whistle on his dirty ass. I'd have done the same thing to him, I guess. Hey, I'll make you a deal. Unlock this cell and I'll give you this. There's no other way out of that parking garage. Believe me. Sorry, I can't do that. I have to talk to the chief first. Look, we're both prisoners in this station. So either we play nice and help each other out. Or... Shit. It's coming. What? What's coming? Come on. Come on, don't be an asshole. Okay, you need this. Just get me the fuck out of here. Oh my god. Who is that? It's just me. So you can put that thing away. I, I don't even know what happened. It just happened so quick. I told you to get out of here. You wouldn't want to end up like Ben, would you? You knew him? He was an informant. Had information of use to my investigation. So what he said was true? Hey, you can't keep walking away from me. I don't even know your name. I'm Leon Kennedy. Find a way out, Leon. Before it's too late. Then we'll talk. Name's Ada. Well, I guess the deal's on. What in the world? Okay, so we get a tool here. If we inspect that, it becomes the square crank. And so that was the main reason, well, yeah, that was the main reason why I came down here. Was in order to get that, it would be exceptionally difficult to navigate the remainder of B1 without it. So, different item than what we get from Claire's walkthrough as well. So, we didn't get the square crank. So, that'll allow us to access a couple areas in the police station that we couldn't access through Claire on the first run. So, we get a memo here. It's somewhat similar to the one that we encountered in the chief's office as Claire in the first run. And so, this one is in regards to the jail power panel. Custom power panel parts. View in the generator room. And 
one in the clock tower. And so we get the main quest objective update to find the power panel parts. And we have the power panel over here, very similar to what we ran into in the chief's office as Claire. And then Ben over here has the parking pass. So we're going to have to figure out how to get the power panel parts so that we can get the parking pass from Ben this time. So definitely some variation here in B1 as Leon in the second run by comparison to what we ran into then is Claire in the first run. And then also the uh, mysterious lady revealed her name and her name's Ada. And I figured I'd just reveal a little bit about her. I'm sure fans of the franchise know quite a bit about Ada, but she sort of seems to be Leon's rom romantic interest or partner from the franchise, so to speak. She makes appearances in res both Resident Evil 4 and 6 as well. And I'm definitely more familiar with 4 than I am with 6, but both 4 and 6 are very heavily tied to Leon's side of the story. And so in Resident Evil 4, I remember Ada was sent to sample of Las Plagas for Albert Wesker, which then played a role in Resident Evil 5, I believe. So anyways, with that being said, we'll go ahead and head on down the ladder here. And I do want to make use of the storage box now where I started the episode. And I can go ahead and get rid of the handgun. I definitely won't be needing the magnum. I do want to keep my square crank. And this segment coming up can be somewhat inventory intensive. So I do want to be somewhat mindful of how much stuff I'm picking up here at the item box. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the Matilda. And then I want to grab some gunpowder as well that I've stockpiled and just go ahead here and take another look and make sure that I got everything that I need and yeah that should be fine so so if I combine the gum powders I get handgun ammo and so this is the handgun ammo that we got on the first run as Claire but all the drops provided by the game as Leon have been replaced with this high caliber handgun ammo and so we're not acquiring the typical well the nine millimeter that we would have gotten as Claire uh, on the first run so in order to get that again we have to make it this time is what it seems like thus far and that's important because the Matilda runs on the the handgun ammo here and not the high grade stuff that we've been running into and so if we want to use the Matilda which I am going to want to for later segments of this episode, we're going to need regular handgun ammo. So, so yes, so we'll go ahead and make enough to hopefully get us through some upcoming tasks here. And then we can go ahead and head on over to the other door that is now open as well. And continue exploring the police station or the B1 here and just to sort of indicate this door has the red light above it and it's locked and that would have been the way to the private elevator to the chief's office so but we do get access to this other door here so we can go ahead and head on through there and I actually want to go ahead and head on up to the firing range first. Well, I'll stop off here real quick. And this door, much like with Claire, is locked. So we can't go through there. At least not yet. But we can go into the firing range. Which I want to do right now. And I sort of want to go through it in backwards. It just seems to work a little better for acquiring all the items so if I go all the way through to the other side where I 
took down the first Mr. Raccoon I found is Claire. There's some shotgun ammo over here that I can pick up. And there's a couple of zombies that won't wake up, but... So we don't have to worry about them. They're not going to be of any threat to us. So we can go ahead and pick up the shotgun ammo without fear of them coming to life or anything. And go ahead and mark this other diamond door on the map as well. Can we get the Mr. Raccoon Flyer again. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time going over that. As it's very similar to, or it is the exact same flyer as what we ran into in Claire's segment on the first run, so. Just sort of details the nature of the Mr. Raccoon figurines that we're taking down, so. Over here we get a box again. And the tin storage box can be inspected further. To once again yield the key. Which turns into the car key. And it says that the blade is bent. And then we get the equipment disposal notice over here as well. So it's once again is to car 7439. So I want to go ahead and head back on out to the parking garage now as I do want to get the item out of the trunk before I continue exploring the remainder of B1 here. And 7439 is not too difficult to find. It's right over here. So as is indicated by the plate. So in order to get access to the trunk we examine the car key. Press the button on the back, and presto, the trunk opens. We can inspect the trunk. And this time, rather than getting the upgraded handgun that we did with Claire, we get a gun stock for the Matilda. And so the gun stock can be combined with the Matilda, and by doing so, now the Matilda will fire in three round bursts. And so that's very similar to the Matilda that was in Resident Evil 4, which was a nice weapon, but there certainly was more powerful weapons in Resident Evil 4. But the Matilda was fun, and it ran on handgun ammo, and it was a very, very powerful handgun. So now we have a three-round or three-round firing Matilda, with Leon. Now, I think in the original Resident Evil 2, they also had an upgrade that allowed the handgun to fire in three round bursts, too, if I remember correctly. And so now we can go ahead and head back on in and continue our exploration of B1. And we pick up a blue herb over here. And that's all the items then that are available in the hallway. And so there's no liquors in the kennel this time. But there are a series of zombie dogs that we want to take down. And I'm going to use the shotgun. So. There's three of them that we can take down. And by so doing, we save ourselves a little bit of grief here later on. We make things a little bit easier, so... That was part of the reason why I elected to take out the zombies in the jail, was because by doing such, it makes a couple more segments... Well, I'm not entirely sure, but my hypothesis is, is that it will make things a little bit easier down the road, so... Go ahead and... Head through the kennel. Oh, there is one item here. I'll have to come back for it. I'll pick it up on the way out, hopefully. So. And I don't want to go into the morgue just yet. I'll avoid that. But I do want to use the crank here that I acquired.
I'm gonna go ahead and head on into this room over here now to the, I believe it's the generator room. Yeah. And we can grab a green herb. There's a few other things to pick up here. Such as the boxed electronic part that we can then examine to get the first electronic part for the power panel. And we can expect, expect that further to make it the power panel part. So there's some gunpowder over here on the shelf. And I do believe that's everything in the generator room. And so now over here we got a puzzle that's very similar to what we ran into as Claire in the sewers. So we can go ahead and flip all these switches and when they're in green they're in the on position. And it would seem that once again we want the needle from both meters to be in the red. So in order to accomplish that we just go ahead and this time leave the first and fourth off and now there's going to be a monster that shows up a Cerberus and I do want to use the the Matilda if at all possible to take it down and they take about four shots to take down so I didn't really get the chance to show off the three round burst capacity there unfortunately but yeah by holding down the trigger it'll shoot in a three round burst which is very effective for taking down the zombie dogs. And so right there, if I hadn't taken out the zombie dogs, there would have been another one that came in here and probably would have attacked me. So, in the kennel anyway. So there was the three zombie dogs in there that I took out. And by taking them down there, I don't have to worry about them now. So once the power comes on... There's going to be another one out here then that I'm going to have to tangle with. And this one can be a little tricky by comparison. I don't have any defense items on me, so... There we go. And so now with the power back on, I, I'm going to go ahead and head on into the morgue. And the reason why I waited was that it provides me a bit of a tactical advantage with the power being on. I can sort of see my way around here in the morgue just a bit better. But anyways, I picked up this file related item that's in, similar to what we ran into in the first run as Claire, so... I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time going over that as a result. So, And the items then in the morgue are very similar or the same as what we would have acquired in the first run. So I can go ahead and pick up this red herb here. And then go ahead and shut the drawer. Over here is a flash grenade. A defense item that with any luck I'll be able to hold off on using till later. Go ahead and shut that again. And then right over here if we open this drawer we get access to the last item in the room. But we also have a zombie to fight as well. But we can go ahead then and pick up the key again. And we'll have one more zombie then to tangle with on the way out. So, yeah. No real big challenge with the shotgun in tow there. I know I 
even got a couple headshots, which helps immensely. And by inspecting the key now, we get the diamond key. Go ahead and rearrange everything here just a, just a little bit. Make sure we're organized going forward. Yeah, that should be pretty good, so. Go ahead and open the door, and we're going to head back to the kennel again. And there is one more zombie dog, too. Well, I'm going backwards. Oops. Want to go the right way first. So there is one more zombie dog to tangle with in here. And so that should take care of all the zombie dogs or the cerberi, I guess. And I can go ahead and claim the item over here that I forgot to pick up on my first run through and that's a high-grade gunpowder yellow, so... And so with it being taken care of, I do want to stop back off at the firing range one more time. And use the key on the diamond door that's in there. So yeah, the zombies do come to life now. So hopefully I'll be able to avoid them. I probably shouldn't have stopped. I probably should have headed right for the door. Well, by going in here, I get a red herb. I'm going to have to combine some items here to pick up the last thing. So I'll go ahead and make a three herb mixture of a green, red, and blue. And then grab the roll of film. Oh so yeah, we'll just see if we can't hightail it on out of here. We won't be back down this way, so at least I don't anticipate we will be. And with the roll of film, we've completely looted the firing range, so we can just head on out there and not worry about the zombies that are in there as a result. And so now by comparison to what we did as Claire, we actually get this door to open. And by having this door open, we regain access then to... It doesn't indicate it just yet. Now where are you at? To the police station. So we're back on the first floor of the police station right outside the break room here. And so I'm going to go ahead and head on into the break room. Because I'm sort of thinking that this will be a good place to stop actually. So there is a typewriter here that I can go ahead and make use of. And that will wrap up this episode. So thanks for watching and tune in next time.